energy, metal and agricultural prices that more than doubled since 2000 are still close to highs reached before the financial crisis, even after commodities from gold to wheat dropped into bear markets. That's according to McKinsey's latest report. Well, I'm Monica Gibson and joining me down the line to share his perspectives is David Madden from IG Group. David, we're seeing a divergence in opinion of the commodities market and the so-called super cycle. The surge in raw material output in the last two years and signs of cooling economic growth in China prompted Goldman Sachs and Citigroup to say the super cycle had ended, whereas McKinsey say long may it continue, citing a separation between new technology and productivity on one hand and emerging market demand and supply constraints on the other. What side of the economic fence would you say you are on? I would say that I'm, I'm on the side of the, side of the fence that I, I do believe that the, the commodity super cycle is coming to an end. Uh, if we look at, say, China, uh, the second largest economy in the world, one of the largest importers of raw mat materials such as copper, which is essential in things like manufacturing and home building, China for a number of years was posting double-digit growth just around the same time as the Eurozone crisis the Eurozone was plunging into its current crisis and slowing, down, and slowing down in the U.S. So if you look at the massive demand from China over the last number of years, it's still very, very high compared to Western economies. But I do think that we're the, the, the kind of the boom days of China buying up as, met, as much metals as they can get their hands on is, is coming to an end. And I do feel that if you look at, at the kind of more base metals, such as, such as, such as copper, you will see a bit of a, a, bit of a sell off, a clear sell off trend over the last couple of years. I don't think the market's going to be, by any, any means going to crash, but I do feel that the days of when things are going to the moon and beyond and everything is moving in one direction as far as commodities are, go, as far as commodities are concerned, I do think those days are over. And traders are kind of adjusting their, their, their perception of China. It's no longer the booming, but it's still in a very, very strong position. The manufacturing figures off in the last two months in China have been quite good. I believe the manufacturing in China at a six-month high, so we're definitely in for a soft landing and not the massive credit crunch style decline some analysts were expecting. Amid stalling in Fed budget talks, the likelihood of a government shutdown and slowing China, analysts have said they do not envisage the gold market to revisit the same euphoria seen during the debt ceiling crisis in the mid-2011. Nonetheless, US debt ceiling concerns would be viewed as positive for bullion. Aspirations, however, of the $2,000 mark are a thing of the past, right? I do think the $2,000 mark for gold is, is far behind us, right? I'm not to say that gold will, will always have the flight to quality factor which other metals uh, don't have, but I do think a level, such an ambitious level, such as 2000, is well behind us. You also have to keep in mind that back in August 2011, when the U.S. was downgraded over the whole debt ceiling issue, it wasn't just a, it wasn't just that factor which pushed gold towards the $2,000 mark. It was also the, the kind of second round, round two of the Eurozone debt crisis. There was, I believe, Greece was in a second uh, bailout over the, that summer period. So the combination of the Eurozone debt crisis and the U.S. losing a AAA rating pushed the gold towards the $2,000 mark. I believe it got up to around 1880 or the $1,900 mark. So if it didn't reach it, didn't reach $2,000 back to, over two years ago when the Eurozone debt crisis was in a much worse state and the debt, debt ceiling was, 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 potential, was on the cards. If it didn't touch it then, I don't think we, we have any chance of touching it in the near future, given that we're back down for gold around the 1330 level. The yellow metal may be in line for its first annual drop in 13 years. However, some investors remain optimistic due to the trend of customers who are long-term holders of gold, believing this is helping to build a strong foundation for the precious metal. Is this an optimism you share despite the changes in attitude towards gold? I do think a long-term appetite for gold will always remain, because as I mentioned earlier in the last comment, gold always has the flight to quality factor. It's been probably the oldest investment tool in the world. But I do think what we're seeing a slight change in the market, whereas people who've held gold tend to be investors, tend to be people who hold on to it for 5, 10, 20 years and quite a long term. Whereas for the last number of years, what we've seen is a lot of speculators coming into the market in the form of gold futures or gold ETFs, exchange traded funds. And given the turbulent times politically and economically we've seen in the last year or so, I do, that, that's why the price of gold ha has come off so much. But I do think that in the long term, gold, gold does have a bright future. 
We've spoken about the long term, but considering we have Chinese holidays next week and with the budget talk hanging over us, what is your outlook for gold in the coming months? I think gold is going to be very much looking towards what's going on with the, in the United States, uh, very much geared around the Federal Reserve, what they're going to do in terms of their quantitative easing process. Last Wednesday, when they decided to keep, it, to keep the policy unchanged at $85 billion a month, we saw a massive surge in the price of gold and moved up about $60, $70 in a very short space of time. It's given up some of that gains, but given that we're, we're, we're heading towards the debt ceiling talks over in Washington, D.C., gold will always have that kind of flight to quality factor. And if, and if traders get worried that, that the U.S. could be downgraded again, and we could see a sell-off in the equity markets, and we could see people taking cash out of equities and back into gold. Regarding China, um, people, when, when obviously China is a major player in the, in the commodities market. So with China out of the equation, if they're, they're going to be in holidays for a number of days, we may see a higher volatility and because of due, due to lower trading volumes. David, it's been great to catch up with you and hear your perspectives. Thank you so much. Well, viewers, that's all from me for the moment, but click back for our daily programmes and many more exclusive interviews. Goodbye for now.